Hey, what's good, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. This is Echo Simpson. I'm currently in Elmina. So why am I here? Because I have a beautiful family member from the United States visiting Ghana. And then she was like, hey, Echo, I have some books for you. I want to see you. So I came here to where she resides. And she has something beautiful to tell me. But I want you to listen to what she has to say. Echo, Echo, Echo City. Hey, hello everyone. Um, my name is Leslie Jackson, also known as a boot washer invested. I'm a priest at the Shrine of My Aunt in New York City, and I came all this way just to see a cow something. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wrote something, you know, I, I brought some books and I wrote something for him and for the community. So uh, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts with you with your community and with you, Akal. So, um, I believe it's important for children of any village to receive a good education. As parents, we have the responsibility to make sure that our children have everything they need to succeed in school. In my opinion, it shouldn't just be the responsibility of the parents. The whole community should support their local schools. When we support our children and schools collectively, in the long run, we all benefit because we are preparing future leaders who will hopefully contribute to making the community a better place in the future. Remember the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. This proverb means an entire community of people must provide for and interact positively with children for some for those children to experience and grow in a safe and healthy environment. I will close by saying may the most high continue to bless and keep your school, its teachers and students. May the shelves of this school library overflow with books and all kinds of instructional materials. And may all the wonderful children who have graduated from this wonderful school move on to become successful doctors, lawyers, inventors, entrepreneurs who contribute to making their community and the world a better place to what will enter. That means thank you to the divine. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love it. I love it. You know, after reading the script from your heart to me and my student and the entire community. I want to use this opportunity also to welcome you to Ghana officially. Thank you. You know, and you're welcome to my school any day, any time. Uh, I would wish that my school would be one of the model mm. where other schools would have to learn mm. that sisters like yourself mm. coming in, spending time with the kids, teaching them, you know, because. I happen to be in the city, mm. they happen to be in the rural oh, community, okay. so they don't get to see certain things. So when they have to bypass the city and meet someone from a bigger uh, place, like mm. in the US, then I think it's a, it's a beautiful opportunity for them to also get to learn. Because yes. they they still call African-American mm. a white person. Oh, uh, what's I forgot the word. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been trying to teach them that no, Obroni is a white, white, white right. person. Right. And then you are, so when we have you coming in like that, it will help you know change the mindset. And also, I wish my school would be one of the best schools that easily relates mm. for the diaspora community. Because at the end of the day, someone will say, and all Obokesi will say that. The African American is the most educated person in this world mm -hmm. because you're black from Africa, have the African feeling in everything, mm -hmm. and the same way you happen to come from the white man's um, city or right. country where you've gotten to learn about the technology yes. and how they do things. So we can bring it back. Uh, you can bring it back mm -hmm. home, and then we can use that yes. to develop Africa. Work together. Work together. That's right. Yeah. To make Africa. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I really wanted to ask you this. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick coming to Ghana or Africa to leave? Maybe for the rest of your life well, or to leave? The first time I came last year, I just fell in love mm -hmm. with the people, with the place, with 
with the animal. Like I said before, I love animals. Just to just to see animals walk down well, the street <laughs> side by side with people, like it's so peaceful. Yeah. That just blew my mind because I'm I'm not from like the country, Sorry. and so I don't get to see animals that much. It's just seeing these beautiful black faces all over the place. It just made me feel at home. So. So you found <laughs> goats, sheep moving around. Yes, there. yes, just freely and, and peacefully. Yeah, that's something that it's hard for us to to have in the United States. Mm. That peace, that peace of mind, where your 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 soul is just at at ease. I I I have people talk about that. Mm. I I sent someone to the beach, and there were I mean Ghanaians all mm. over the place. And the person was crying. I was like, why are you crying? She said, this is the first time she's seen all black people yes. having fun at the beach with no police, no fighting. Yes. How does that make you feel? Like, why is it always like that out there? Why, why is that aggressiveness? Sometimes we want to know. Well, we were brought over there to do, to work for them for free. And now that they can't do that anymore, they can't enslave us. Now to me, it's like they want us to go. And because we're citizens, mm -hmm. they can't deport us. So to me, they, they kill us, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just, it's not, it's not for us to be over there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be back home with our people where we're the majority. Yeah. But and I understand what she, I understand the crime because last year we went to Mabel's table mm -hmm. and I was looking out at the, the ocean and I could imagine seeing these, these people who were like clear, like they were clear, mm -hmm. like the water mm -hmm. walking back. And I said, those are our ancestors yeah. coming back. So I started crying also. Oh. So I understand the, the yeah. feeling. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Thank you. Yes, <laughs> well, I don't know that. Yeah, let me show you. Okay. I don't know. No, you don't know that. No, how do okay, you do so it? This one comes uh -huh. first. Then this. Okay. You have to fix it in. Okay. And then we snap. Okay. okay. I can't okay. snap because it's finger, but okay. <laughs> okay, so let's try it. Okay, then. This way, put it in. And, and then you snap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep practicing. Yeah, it's like the Christian story. It's mm -hmm. a world story from the Babylonian culture. Right. You know, there are so many things that we borrowed, even yes. the idea of um, heaven. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's uh, the Persian word, which uh, means heaven, a beautiful mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. So with this idea, I know there are so many truths out there that probably we need to seek out yes. for. Yes. And that is the problem with us. We mostly fail to reach out for some of these things. We think it's normal. But, but it's because we've been it's brainwashed, you know what I mean? We've been bring. I mean, when when the Europeans came over and colonized, but it, okay, before they even did all that, what did they come with? The Bible. They came here with the Bible. And the next day, they came with their gun and started killing people and enslaving people. That's how they do. That's how they do it. And, and the same thing they did in, in the United States. We weren't allowed to read, but we could read the Bible. Why? <laughs> of course, it's right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So this is here because. Um, I'm a priest. Um, I'm not gonna say correctly, but this is yeah. We have to. I have to carry this at all times. Okay. If I lose it, I get in trouble. So, mm -hmm. okay. so it has to stay with me. This big thing is it okay for me. me to know the meaning of the symbol? Oh, this is the. Um, it means life. Okay. So when, I, when I'm carrying it, I'm carrying my own life. I have my own life in my own hands. Mm -hmm. So that is yeah, responsible that, for it. Yeah. Whatever yes, happens. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So he, he when he has it, it means the same thing. So when you look at it, you're, this is your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I kind of, and I have gotten help, so I'm good. But a lot of people are not aware, and they're just going off of emotion. Mm -hmm. That's and that's another reason why I love coming spirituality, is because you have to use your brain. Like you can't, your emotions. You have to get control over your emotions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once you get control over your emotions, you're a master. Nothing can stop you. It's all about, it's not just emotions, it's urges. You know, some people out there, they, they don't have any control over their urges, so they're out there doing this and doing that, maybe raping mm -hmm. people, or just overly, you know, just use it, letting their bodies be used. But if you have control over that, then you're, you're master, you're, how, how? Yeah, self yes, self-mastery, and there's nothing that can stop you, and it brings you joy. Mm -hmm. 
So that if that is the key. We're trying to teach people to how to have a self mastery, and that's what it's about. But if, if everybody can do this, the world will be a better place. But how can Africans mm. help with this healing? How the Africans born in the motherland, how can we be of help to the African diaspora in, in this way? Just, okay, just by what I think the one of the things what the Pan-African Village is doing mm -hmm. and having it's just a lot of conversations. It's going to take a long time. Yeah. Conversations about both sides because African-Americans also have to realize that you all were co colonized too. Mm -hmm. So you're going through some, some yeah. mental issues too. So it's on both sides. You know, and we, and okay, I always say this, just like for, for men and women, we both have been abused. We both have been hurt. So we have to see, forgive each other and realize where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stop getting angry at each other, yeah. taking it out on each yeah. other and unify and, and fight who you need to fight. Mm -hmm. And it's not us. <laughs> I have to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Right, and we're yeah. not the enemies. Why are we that looking is, at each other? Even, even in the in, in um, I was I watched that movie, the um, the woman came. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was watching it. And yeah. it was a whole yeah. big controversy over this, right? I'm like, oh, here we go again. Now I understand people are upset. Some people are upset because they're like, well, why are you um, glorifying these women? Glorifying, mm -hmm. but. They don't, do you and do they understand what was going on at the time? All the tribes were fighting each other, trying to grab and, and, and sell the other tribe, right? Because if you didn't do it, you're gonna get you're gonna get sold, right? They did what they had to do. Not only that, if they have a, a, most of your men were taken, because remember, um, your transatlantic slave trade, they took mostly men. They weren't taking the, the women yet, right? So that means you don't have the men, right? So who's left to fight? The women, the women and the children. So if you don't, if you don't fight, then that's it. You're done. So the women had to train. They had to learn how to fight. Start. Hello, my name is Leslie Jackson. I'm from the United States, and I came all this way to um, give these books to Eckhart Simpson at his school. They built a library, and I want to help fill up the library um, shelves. So I present these books to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And on behalf of me, my staff, and the whole school of Afringwa, DABC School, what is it? Thank you very much for bringing us African books, African written books. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>